Hey, greetings friends and welcome once again to my game room. In the colorful history of board games, there are a few companies that were standout pioneers. Back in the 1850s, one of those companies got started as a lithographer, uh, primarily printing children's books, and uh, the name of that company was McLaughlin Brothers. Now the McLaughlin Brothers got into uh, printing board games and puzzles, and that was in uh, the 18. 80s. They uh, were well known for their colorful and precise lithography. That was their background. Now in their catalog in 1901 they included a game that they called a new and clever board game, a game for two called The Man in the Moon. Now The Man in the Moon was actually not a new game per se. It was based on two classic ancient games that uh, I have spotlighted here before. Uh, one of those was uh, the game of Sega from North Africa and borrowed a few rules from the placement phase of a game called Yote, also an African game. And it sort of combined these two. Uh, I don't know if it was deliberate or it just happened out that way, um, but it became the Man in the Moon game. Now this is the uh, packaging that we've come up with for the Peg Pastimes version of the Man in the Moon game. This is not unusual to take a, a game from antiquity and repackage it by uh, a new publisher or for a new audience. The original graphics for The Man in the Moon gave no clue that uh, the actual game itself was a thousand years old. Other companies have done similar things through the years. In fact, I've got a couple of samples here. Um, the game of uh, Naftafel, which is the ancient Norse game, a uh, thousand years old or more. Um, enjoyed renewed popularity these days, but in 1970 uh, the Milton Bradley Company published the game and this is called Swords and Shields. Uh, it's an example of one of these ancient games being resurrected under a new title. Uh, another one is of course Nine Men's Morris which has been played for thousands of years and the mill game um, it's been resurrected so many times this was by the Shaper Company this particular edition, but uh, there have been uh, variations large and small by a lot of publishers over the years. Uh, Drukey, who is very well known for their chess sets, quite often would on the back of the chess board um, have uh, Nine Men's Morris uh, board on the back and they, they published their own version of it called The Mill Game. And uh, so that was very common and still is uh, being published today. Another one is that there's an ancient game called Gomoku, um, which is an Asian game uh, and variations in Korea and so on. And uh, it was picked up by Parker Brothers. Now this is a 1960s edition of Peggy. They originally published the game Peggy in uh, 1924, I believe it was. And uh, it essentially is Gomoku. It's the same old uh, an ancient Chinese game uh, that uh, can still be found as Gomoku, but uh, Peggy was an incarnation of that uh, by a modern publisher. It's not unusual then to see a game like Man in the Moon that is based on an earlier game and just repackaged. Then McLaughlin Brothers uh, did an outstanding job of doing that in uh, 1901. Now their particular box, I guess you could say it was some stunning artwork. Um, I think I would prefer to use creepy as an adjective for it. It gave me nightmares as a kid to see this man in the moon face staring down at me from a shelf in the bedroom. But um, at any rate, it's a fun little game. Let's take a few minutes here and learn how to play the man in the moon. Each player starts with 12 pieces, black or white, off the board. This game is a hybrid of a couple of African games. And like those and many other such games, there's a drop phase and a move phase. Pieces are placed one player per turn on any vacant space on the board except the center space. When all pegs are in place, the move phase begins. The first player moves one of their pegs to the center space. All moves are orthogonal, no diagonals allowed. 
This means that a lazy first player might end up not being able to make that first move to the center. If that happens, the second player gets the first move. When a player moves to a point where one of the other player's pegs is between two of their own, that peg is captured and removed from the board. Note that this doesn't apply to the drop phase, only to the move phase. Like most games using this custodial capture method, pegs can move between opponent's pegs without being captured. There are no suicide moves. The man in the moon allows multiple pegs to be captured by one move if they are in an unbroken line between the two capturing pegs. However, the original rules are vague on one count. There is no rule about multiple captures at right angles. We can assume this is possible as most similar games allow it. One more rule states that, quote, if at any time a player cannot move because all possible moves are blocked, the other player must go on moving until the blockade is raised, enabling the blocked player to take a turn. Then the play goes on as before. This rule also applies to the first move of the game. The player who succeeds in reducing his opponent to one peg wins the game. The losing player is then awarded the title of the Man in the Moon. So that's how you play the game. Uh, it should be very familiar to a lot of uh, fans of strategy games and uh, fairly easy to pick up and play. Um, I definitely like the nostalgic feel of it in our version for uh, Peg Pastimes. Uh, we reproduced the wording that they used in 1901 in the rules, which is a little stilted, kind of a Victorian feel to it. Interesting to, to just read the rules uh, in that form. But uh, fun little game, so if you get a chance to play Man in the Moon, by all means do. Um, uh, there'll be a link here in the show notes as to where you can find a copy. Thanks again to our uh, friends uh, that supported the Kickstarter campaign to bring this uh, game and others to you. I'm still working on the series of uh, how to play videos for the uh, latest Kickstarter this summer. And if you want to be sure and be notified when those new videos come out, by all means click the uh, little bell here. Subscribe to the uh, channel so you don't miss out on new game videos. And be sure to uh, let us know what you think. Meanwhile, I want to be sure to invite you to play every day. Mm -hmm.